My name is Dr. Ronald Hugate and we're going to go through the GONS procedure and what to expect and how it's done. There's lots of ways to do the GONS procedure, lots of different techniques. Our technique here is a single incision technique and we use a fairly small incision as you, you can see here on the diagram. The incision starts on the outer part of the pelvis. There's a little bump there called the ASIS and we start just outside that, um, out, outside that bump. And the skin incision is curved. We curve it slightly in line with the groin so that it can be hidden by a modest uh, bikini after the surgery. The um, surgical incision length really depends on the size of our patient. And then once we go through our skin incision, uh, we, we don't have to cut through muscles. We can actually go between the muscle planes to get to the areas that we need to for the uh, cuts in the bone. All right, once we go through and make our skin incision, this is a bone model of what we see. This is a, a pelvis that shows you what we're, what we're trying to accomplish here. In this picture, you can see the socket is here. It's called the acetabulum. And there are three main bones that make up the pelvis. The ilium is the wing of the pelvis. And then the ischium and the pubis are the two bones in the front that connect the circle. Your pelvis is a circle. And those two bones connect uh, in the front. And what we expose when we do the surgery is we don't have to go down in here into the hip joint, so we can leave all these important muscles and ligaments and tendons attached here. We don't have to see any of that. We can stay outside of that. And we go between the muscles to make some controlled cuts in these three bones, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis, and that allows us eventually to move the cup where we want it to be. So this is a picture, again, of the bone model. Uh, we've changed the perspective a little bit, so we're looking from the inside of the pelvis out now. And you can see that we have made these three uh, controlled cuts that we just talked about. Um, here is the cut uh, controlled in the ilium, and that comes around and connects to the cut that we make in the ischium. And then here is the cut in the pubis. And you can see from this picture now that this segment on the other side of this is the, is the actual cup, the acetabulum. That frees it up completely. And so now we're in a position where it's freed up from the pelvis and we can move it wherever we like to improve the hip mechanics. So again, here's another uh, perspective on our, our bone model. Now the, the cup has been moved, so we're looking at the pelvis now from the front, and this is after we've actually moved the cup into a better position. So you can, again, see our controlled cuts that we made in the pubis, the ischium, the ilium. We've already rotated the cup over into its better position and then we place three screws uh, that start up in the ilium and go down um, into the cup fragment here to hold it into place. They're actually buried inside the bone. These aren't screws that you would feel or, or see, uh, but they um, help to hold the, the bone in position until it heals. It generally takes about six weeks to heal enough to start weight bearing. So here are a couple x-rays, and these are the actual x-rays that we use during the operation to make sure that we have everything in the right place. These are called fluoroscopy um, x-rays, and I'll try and explain. They're a little bit busy, but um, what we do is once we've made the cuts in the bone, we try and get a perfect x-ray of the hip, and we use that x-ray to, to evaluate how well we've done in, uh, in reshaping it, essentially. Here on the left side here, you can see We've already made our uh, controlled bone cuts. There's a couple of instruments that we put in there to help us rotate the bone into the position that we want it to be in. I've outlined here in green where the cup is now, and that it helps us to determine uh, where, where we need to move it to. And then once we achieve the prescribed angle of coverage, either on the side or in the front, um, we can take another uh, fluoro shot to confirm it. So here it is after we've moved the cup. So we have again these couple of instruments in that help us to move the cup over into position. Now you can see from that green arc there that the cup is over the ball and it, 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 um, it has more, um, we've developed more normal hip mechanics by moving it into that position. And then once we're happy with that, we'll actually um, uh, secure that in, in place with the screws um, so that it will heal in that position long term. All right, this is an x-ray that we take in the recovery room after surgery. Just again, it helps us to judge how, um, how well we did in uh, moving the cup where it belongs. You can see on this patient's right hip that the cup um, has been moved into a better position. Here are those controlled cuts in the bone, in the ilium, the ischium, the pubis. You can see a small gap there, and that's very common because as we move that whole segment over, 
There is a small gap created, although that's filled in over the first six weeks um, after uh, surgery with healing. These three screws are actually placed, again, inside the bone. Uh, this is something that people will rarely feel. Um, and that goes in to hold the, the cup in position until it, until it heals up. The screws are made to stay in forever. Uh, I'd say the vast majority of the time, maybe 95% of the time, we leave those in forever. People don't notice them. On a few patients, especially ones who are very thin, they may feel some irritation up around these screws and then uh, you know, six months to a year after the surgery, we can very easily take those out in about 10 minutes um, if necessary. But the vast majority of those stay in place. And again, the goal of the surgery was to get the socket over the ball, and you can see that we've achieved that here nicely. One thing uh, to notice, again, this is our post-operative x-ray. We just performed a Gons osteotomy on the uh, right hip of this patient, is that it's very common for this to be a bilateral problem. And so we see patients often who may come in symptomatic on one side, and then we incidentally find that it's occurring on the other side as well. Depending on their symptoms and the severity, they may have to have eventually both sides um, corrected with the GONS procedure. We try to do that in a staged fashion. Um, uh, after the first GONS is performed, it takes about four to six months for most people to get strong enough to have the second uh, GONS uh, performed because we want to have them able to fully weight bear on one side before we go to the other side for surgery. So we generally will stage a second GONS procedure if necessary by about four to six months. People will often ask me how successful is a GONS procedure and again it really de it depends on how early we're able to catch the problem. If we catch patients early in life without significant arthritis with a good joint space who are young and healthy and can reshape their hip joints, the vast majority never need to have their hips replaced or need to have any more surgery again. About 80 percent of those patients never need to have their hips replaced ever. If we catch patients uh, later in the process where they've already developed some arthritis, uh, or if they have um, uh, medical problems, diabetes, uh, if they're heavier smokers, for example, those patients don't do quite as good. But a young, healthy patient that we catch this disease in early and correct it, about an 80% a chance that they'll never have to have their hips replaced again or if they do have to have their hips replaced, it's uh, later in their lives when it's a more appropriate time to have that done. The GONS procedure is a big procedure. Uh, there's, there's no question about that. However, for young people, uh, this gives them their lives back. Uh, a young person without the ability to run or jump or have fun, uh, ski aggressively, uh, live outdoors, um, th this gives them all of that back.